We're now going to examine the EDI profile. So what exactly is an EDI profile? Well, the EDI profile data elements tab allows you to manually add or import segments to define the EDI document field structure. First, you will define your standard. Are you using X12, Edifact, or HL7? Within your standard, you can select your transmission. This allows you to select and import predefined segments for the selected version. Based on the looping section being constructed, Atomsphere will automatically add the segment or segments to the appropriate section loop. Next, you will need to define the file layout using the Options tab. And finally, if you are creating a user-defined EDI profile, you will need to manually add the child loop segments and data elements and identifier instances on the Data Elements tab. To access the Create Component drop-down window, what you will do is click on the blue drop-down arrow next to Component Explorer, where you want to create your new profile and choose New Component. Within the Create Component window, you will choose your profile. You will give your profile a name. You will make sure it's going to the correct location, and then select EDI for the profile format. Once you select EDI, you will need to select the standard that you are using. A dialog is then displayed asking if you want to import your profile. Since we know what type of profile we want to use, we're going to press Import to define our EDI profile. To select the transmission, we will use the drop-down to select 4010, and the version we can enter 850, click on the search button, and it will retrieve it for us. Once it retrieves it, we'll just highlight the transmission and click on the OK button. Now earlier, when we were discussing the spec, I said the only thing you need to know is what segments are contained in your spec. The Data Elements section, well in the Data Elements section, you just check out the segments contained in the spec and Atomsphere will do the rest. Now keep in mind, you want to check off all segments that are in your spec, whether they're mandatory or optional, so you have access to them in your profile. Once selected, Atomsphere will automatically create the profile containing all of your data elements, including all of your looping. I'm going to walk through exercise number two to configure your EDI transaction structure. This begins in your book on page 8 and it goes up to page 12. Alright, we're going to begin by configuring our EDI transaction structure. We're going to go to our directory and we're going to click on the drop down and select new component. We're going to call this Walgett's 850 profile. We're going to make sure it's going to our EDI inbound create directory, which it is. And the type of profile it's going to be, the profile format, is going to be EDI. Now, we need to select the standard. At this point in time, we have our choices between X12, which is the default, Edifact, HL7, and User Define. We're going to select X12. We click on Create. We have a Getting Started screen. In our Getting Started screen, it's asking us if we want to import a profile or if we want to manually create the profile. You want to import the profile if it is Edifact, HL7, or X12. The only time you want to manually create a profile is if it is a custom profile. So we're going to import our profile. We choose our version. This we will have to select. It's going to be 4010. It'll list all the different document types for 4010. Now ours is 850, which is pretty far down there. So we're just going to type in 850. So I just typed in 850. It came up with 850 purchase order. I highlight it and then I click OK. At this point in time, it will bring up the segments for an 850 and all we will have to do is select them. What I've done is I have divided my screen and on one side I have my Walgett's 850 spec. On the other side I have my platform. What we typically do is if you have more than one screen, of course you will put your spec on one screen, your platform on the other. Since I only have one screen I can project this with, I'm going to just put them, split the screen and put it all on one screen. 
I have to choose a segment or segments. It has my three data elements, my three areas over here, my header loop, my, de my detail loop, and my summary loop. And over here, it has all the segments that would be defined in the header. It has all the segments that would be defined in the detail and all the segments that would de be defined in the summary. I take a look over here. And if it's listed on this side, I just check it off. So I'll just go ST for the transaction set header, EEG for the beginning segment, REF. REF is the reference identifier. PER is the administrative communication contact. FOB, relate FOB related instructions. CSH is right here. It is the sales requirements. Next, what I have is I have SAC. Now, when I come down here, you will see that SAC is a loop. So I need to expand this, and inside of it, I have two sections. I have SAC and CUR. Over here, it's telling me I only need one. I only need the SAC part, portion of it. So I'm just going to click on this. The next one is ITD, so I will click on that, and then DTM. Now the next one listed here is TD5, and if I look at the position numbers, DTM is 150 for my date time reference, and for my carrier details, my TD5, that is 240. Now what that tells me is I'm going to have to scroll down quite a bit in order to find it. So it's not going to be right after it, and here it is down here. So here's my TD5 segment. The next one I'm going to go to is on 295. This is my N9 loop. So I'm going to come down a little bit, and you'll see that there's a loop for N9. When I expand it, there are three things in the N9 loop. There's N9, DTM, and message. I only need N9 and message. The next is the N1 loop, and this is a common loop. This contains all your name, address information. I only need the first four pieces of this, the N1, N2, N3, and N4, which is my name, my additional name information, address information, and geographic location. And that's all I have for my heading section. The next one I have is my detail section. The detail has one main loop, and that is called P01, but when I expand it, there are many things in P01. So I'm going to select P01, CPT, which is another loop inside of it. I'll go down and select another loop, which is PID, and I'll be looking for that, and then I'll select P04. I'll come down to the SAC loop. I'll be selecting that. The SAC is the Service Promotion Alliance in Charge information, so I will be selecting SAC. And then I'll go down a little bit further, and this start, notice that this is 130, I, the next one is 470, so I will be going down quite a bit, and I'll be looking for SLN. And SLN is pretty far down there, and I'm looking for the subline detail. And then finally, I'll look at the PID within there, which is the product item description. The last thing I need is a summary. I have that down here. The two that I will be doing, I'll expand the CTT loop and I will select CTT, which will be my transaction totals, and then SE, which is required. This is my transaction set trailer. Once I've selected everything, I will click on close. I will and click on OK. And now it'll build out my header. So what if I made a mistake? I built my header and now I said, oh my goodness, I made a mistake. Let's just, for example, this CUR, I need this. So this is going to come after my BEG line. So what I will do is I will select it. But notice what is done is it's placed this at the bottom of my header loop. So what I will do is I will just come up here and move it up. So now I have my ST line. I have my BEG line, I have my CUR line, and I have my REF line. Well, of course, we don't need the CUR line, so maybe I added that by mistake, or maybe I've added other things by mistake. What I would do is just click on the drop-down, and I would click on Delete Segment, and it goes away. So once you are pleased with your data elements, you'll click on the Save button, 
to save your data elements. All right, now it's your turn to complete exercise number two to configure the EDI transaction structure. This begins in your activity guide on page eight and it goes up to page 12. When we return, we're gonna be examining the options tab of the profile.